Disinformation! Disinformation! Won't someone please save me from disinformation? Yeah, Joe Biden will. He set up a disinformation governance board. Only one letter different from the KGB. All good there. Hello there, you 5.6 million Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage. I appreciate you. I love you. If you want to see me live, you can. If you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe. If you ain't turned on the notification bell, turn it on so as it wakes you up in the dead of night every time something occurs to me. What's occurred to me now is that disinformation has become like, what is disinformation? No, we used to talk about disinformation. We used to talk about propaganda, downright lies, not trusting people, discernment, making decisions for yourself. Now what it's all about is disinformation. Someone might disinformation you so hard. I think it kind of began around Joe Rogan Spotify, didn't it? It was this. Hmm, that Joe Rogan's popular. We don't seem to be able to control him. That's annoying. What if we say that he's doing disinformation and misinformation? What do you mean by that? Is it objectively disinformation or misinformation? Or is it stuff you don't agree with? Because even in fields of expertise and apparent scientific empiricism, there are still disagreements and discussions to be had. And I reckon when the state set up an agency to determine what is truth and what's not truth, guess what I reckon could happen? I mean, I don't know if I'd be really cynical, they may say things are not true if those things are not convenient to them. I mean, what's Julian Assange in prison for? Disinformationing people right up the Gulf War? Let's have a look at this story. So the uh, Department of Homeland Security is setting up a disinformation governance board to try to counter the spread of false information. So remember the last couple of years, have there been examples of things that were said to be true or not true that then later the perspective or opinion changed? Disinformation expert Nina Jankovic will lead the board. Let's just hope that Nina Jankovic is 100% reliable and has got no previous of making any bulls up in any area at all. In a twist to implausible for fiction, the abbreviation DGB is one letter off from KGB. That's disinformation. It doesn't matter if something's got certain initial letters. You're being superstitious. The stated goal of combating mis- and disinformation. What's the difference? It's already confusing, isn't it? Misinformation. Well, it's misinformation before she's married. But once it gets married, it's disinformation. <laughs> is framed to seem unobjectionable. Who objects the truth and pines for falsehood? Yeah, no one. DGB experts will guide the way, separating the informational wheat from the disinformational chaff. But there's one small problem with empowering truth experts. Experts are people. I'm increasingly realising that, you know. They're a person that goes home and picks their nose and looks out the window and does a little fart. They're... Human beings, there's a crossover, there's fallibility, there's flaws. They're subject to the emotions that we're subject to. They're subject to bribery. They're certainly subject to ideologies, aren't they? And you're not going to give someone the job of being in charge of disinformation, just like, oh, oh you, you can do it. It's going to be someone who broadly agrees with you, has the same agenda as you. I'm not comfortable at all with anyone saying they know what the truth is because, well, this is how I'm a human being. And my understanding of reality is continually changing. I thought that this was right. I thought that that was right. This is wrong now. Oh, God. It's continually evolving and shifting. And that's a good thing. That's a sign that you're engaged with reality in a symbiotic relationship with stimuli and circumstance. The alternative is dogma. The alternative is tyranny. The alternative is the DGB, what you're being offered. If you don't predict doom and reality is worse than you predicted, you will be blamed and shamed. The incentives are clear. Truth experts at the DGB will proclaim grave threats around every turn, even when any threats are minor to non-existent. Of course, the facility and ability to enhance centralised power increases under threat. Like, think about your own life. When you feel, broadly speaking, relaxed and all right, yeah, you've got a little spring in your step. You might go for a stroll, maybe catch an apple and flip it off your elbow. But it's like, oh, I don't think things are going to work out for you. Oh no, oh, should I even be eating this apple? Like, if you're continually stimulated into a state of fear, you're more easy to control. Imagine that happening at a state level. Imagine the sort of frequency jam of anxiety that's just been going on and on and on, one story to the next. It's just like an ongoing sort of carnival of misery. Oh, thank God that pandemic's over. Eh, eh, war now. Oh God. Right, don't think about the war. It's got a bit boring, but bloody Johnny Depp's marriage is a bright state. By creating the DGB, the US government is creating a crisis monitor with the dial permanently set to existential threat. No one inside the board will have the incentive or the courage to dial it down. No, why would you dial down your own power when your business is power? That's what the government is. The government is about power control. That's what the word government means. The dangers of the DGB will be amplified if it becomes the tool of partisan political actors, and it already has. Executive Director Nina Jankovic, who once described Hunter Biden's laptop as a Trump campaign, 
campaign product, has written that America's information landscape includes declining trust in the media fed by the Trump administration's relentless attacks on the fourth estate. She has said, unless we mitigate our own political polarisation, our own internal issues, we will continue to be an easy target for any malign actor, Russian or Iranian, foreign or domestic, to manipulate. I suppose to create this agency, you have to legitimise its existence. I suppose the presidency of Trump did a lot of things that were beneficial to those currently in power. It created an sort of an omnipresent bogeyman, even after Trump's power. We say bogeyman in my country. An omnipresent power who's still being used even after his administration has ended. I'm not sure that Trump's version of misinformation is any worse than Biden's version of misinformation. Imagine if before Biden was elected, this was going on. That laptop, it is real. Oh no, this laptop, it turns out it was Hunter's. There's no such thing as objective miss or disinformation. There are sets of facts that are convenient to certain outcomes. In 2020, when Donald Trump was president, Yankovic did not want the executive branch to have the power to control free speech. Oh, it's okay when we do it. Since it was announced that she would lead the board, her previous social media posts and interviews have surfaced with many noting she's previously spread misinformation herself. You're the perfect candidate. We call you misinformation. Uh, actually, it's misinformation. Oh, sorry. This has highlighted the problem of how people trying to control misinformation online are actively calling for censorship while spreading misinformation themselves. Perhaps we should all just accept that we might all be capable of saying things that are not true, that we might all be wrong, that we've been wrong many times before and we'll be wrong many times again in the future. Perhaps we shouldn't enter this conversation with such certainty, but with a degree of openness that the people we disagree with might be right. And better yet, we might find a common truth between us if we approach one another with open hearts. Not with naivety and stupidity, with open hearts and a kind of reluctance to yield to our own inner dogma and the simplifying comfort that it gives you to just think, well, I'm right, they're all bad, they're all bad actors, disinformation, misinformation. That's no way to run a country. That's not even the way to run one mind. Perhaps the most interesting revelation is that in May 2020, she said that the executive arm of the government should not control speech. Did I say not? I meant should imagine that you know with president trump right now calling all of these news organizations that have uh <laughs> inconvenient for him stories that they that they're getting out there that he's calling fake news and now lashing out at platforms i would never want to see our executive branch have that sort of power you could be in charge of it if you want okay that i'll do um, and that's why, you know, the legislative process with our duly elected uh, officials is really important. That sort of consultative rulemaking process. Um, and we can't just govern by executive order anymore. People can persuade themselves of anything. Don't you think that human beings, like when you've done something wrong yourself, like maybe you're stealing something. It's not really stealing. I mean, they probably won't miss. They're probably going to just throw this away. If you've like got no actual principles, then... You can just sort of do what you want. And I think that our systems of government, our systems of regulation should be, one, elected by the people that are affected by them and should be reflections of our better nature and should be as local as possible, as close to the people affected by them as is reasonable or feasible. Not abstract, centralised rules where people make stuff up that's not going to affect them because it's convenient for them. What happens if Trump wins in 2024? Uh, you can't have centralised thing. No. Uh, oh, oh. I think the reverberations in the free speech space are huge. It's amazing to hear someone even use free speech that's not from what you would regard or what is regarded as the right. Free speech now has been repackaged as, oh, people don't want free speech. They can go around being sexist, racist, misogynist, hateful, transphobic. Like, I believe in free speech and I don't believe in any of those things. So that people should treat one another with love and respect where possible, judging each other as individuals, not judging each other at all where possible, and approaching things with a set of universal principles that can be applied no matter what the bloody demographic data is of the group or individual you're talking about. That's what I believe, and I believe in free speech. And evidently, a few years ago, that's what people, generally speaking, on the left used to believe. Well, look at it now. Free speech, essentially, might as well have a swastika in the middle of it. Not to mention, this is exactly what Section 230 was designed to do, to allow the platforms to enforce uh, the standards on on their own spaces. There she is, a young, reasonable person making a lot of reasonable points. Now, as long as those points hold fast, whoever's in government, then I've got no problem. Let's see what she's up to now. 
Information laundering is really quite ferocious It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious By saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious I don't know why she's doing this. What's going on? It's how you hide a little hide a little lie It's how you hide a little hide a little lie I'm not sure that this is the right person to run the old disinformation governance board When Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine Or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain they're laundering disinfo when we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice or vote. Oh! That's made me feel unusual. <laughs> what she's done there, she seems to have changed her perspective and her entire outlook on life, preferring to sort of do jaunty little ditties. I suppose we're all entitled to have a little bit of fun, <laughs> as long as that fun isn't at odds with what the DGB believes fun should be and how fun should be communicated. How can you ever really justify controlling information at that scale in alliance with one particular party when you've expressed the contrary view when another party is in power. One of the few things I can hold up as an example of my mm, integrity is that I disagree with both parties being in power because I disagree with the centralised system of governance that both of them represent. I think confining debate to such a small portion of all potential political conversations is in itself a form of tyranny and I don't think either party is meaningfully better than the other one in terms of American or British politics, say, for example. So I certainly don't think anyone's got the right to be haughty, supercilious or to don a little bit of slap and start singing jaunty little ditties about how they know the score. For me, truth is more complicated than that and it should be resolved in the public sphere, in the public square of ideas. We should debate and converse and recognise that mistakes will be made, lies will be told, as with the Hunter Biden laptop, as with the weapons of mass destruction, as with the case of Julian Assange and how he's been subsequently treated. No political party has dominion over truth. We all make mistakes and errors. The thing I object to most is the idea that some centralised government body will know better about what kind of information I can digest than I would. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you don't subscribe to this channel yet, subscribe right now and turn on the notification bell. Also, subscribe to my uh, newsletter. I tell you things on there that I can't tell you here, including some massive information coming up soon. So please make sure you subscribe to that. Click on that right now. Let us know in the comments below what you believe. But most importantly of all, please stay free. Say what you want. Believe what you want. Argue with me if you want to. Stay free.